what is going on YouTube so come back today with my next NBA preview for 2016 so today we're talking about the Indiana Pacers and a team that um, did see a little bit of an improvement last year uh, with Paul George coming back from his pretty drastic leg, leg injury that he had two years ago so I uh, finished 45 and 37 last year good for seventh seed in the Eastern Conference gave the Raptors a pretty good test in the first round in seven games but anyway, let's jump into the first of my two X factors, and I'm going to start with the new head coach, Nate McMillan. Now, was the firing of Frank Go or Frank Vogel my favorite? I'm a big Pacers fan, by the way, if y'all don't know, but I'm going to try to stay un as unbiased as possible. Um, Nate, Mc I, I, I didn't like the firing of Frank Vogel. Um, I don't know if anyone did. I believe he ended up going to the Orlando Magic. Uh, Nate McMillan, a guy that has had a little bit of success in the past in the NBA, but you know, for a team in the Pacers that said they want or that said they want to run a faster offense, Nate McMillan traditionally does not do that um, with the teams that he has coached. So I don't really get the thinking there, but trust Larry Bird, I guess. Um, next one is progression of the offense. This is a big thing. Um, you know, the Pacers have always, or not always, but for the last five, six years, have been a very, very stout defensive team, one of the best defensive teams in the NBA overall. And just the offense just hasn't, most mostly hasn't really been there. Uh, you know, they picked up some uh, bigger names on the offensive end of the floor during the offseason uh, between Thad Young, Jeff Teague, Al Jefferson. And we'll see if those, see if some of those guys can actually make a difference this year. So first key player, biggest name on the Pacers, Paul George. Um, you know, Paul George said that he, he felt like he was officially like back after uh, this round of the Olympics which is cool, um, it's, it, you know, he, he, he played pretty big in the Olympics for the U.S., uh, for the U.S. men's national team, and really, um, really showed where his true value lies in being a gritty defensive player that's one of the uh, best wings in the NBA. Um, but, I, you know, it, he, he's one of the top 10 odds-on favorites to win MVP this year, and let's see, uh, I'm very interested to see if he can make a push for it. Uh, next key player is Jeff Teague, the former Atlanta Hawk. Uh, the Pacers bring him in in a three-way trade for uh, George Hill and uh, the Utah Jazz's first-round pick. Uh, Teague, a guy that really should help them run the offense a little bit faster. There might be a little bit of a log jam between their uh, first three guys in the lineup between Paul George, Jeff Teague, and uh, Monte Ellis just because all three are pretty ball-dominant players. You know what? I, I do like the pickup. Um, it, like I said, it'll be interesting to see if it works out. Uh, next one is Miles Turner. And he was one of the more impressive rookies last year in the NBA. Probably one of the, uh, pro probably one of the guys that surpassed expectations more than most. Uh, and he, I don't know if he's going to start the year in the starting five. Um, in my projected starting five, he will be. But... Um, he, he'll, he'll be challenged by Al Jefferson for that five spot. The Pacers do actually have a little bit of depth at the five now. But Miles Turner's going to take on a bigger role this year. Jan Mahimi is gone. Uh, Turner played in in some spots in place for Mahimi at the five, and then in some spots with Mahimi when he was at or when Miles Turner was playing at the four. Um, but again, this uh, uh, progression into this season. Uh, Hopefully not a sophomore slump for Miles Turner will be important this year. Uh, best case scenario, actually, let's start with the worst case scenario for the Pacers. I think the worst case scenario is um, the team really doesn't gel and they miss the playoffs with like a ninth seed. I really don't think there's a good chance that the Pacers miss the playoffs this year, um, but I, I do think that it is a possibility. The best case scenario for me is... Um, they have just a fantastic season. They end up as a second or as the second seed in the Eastern Conference, and they get knocked out once again by the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then uh, have a little bit of hope looking into the or looking into the future that they can uh, finally get past the Cavs and maybe take ownership of the East as LeBron starts aging. So, my regular prediction for the Pacers this year is going to be forty-seven and thirty-five. I think the improvement or the improvements and all the additions they made are going to help out a little bit. Um, I think they end up around the fourth or or four or five seed in the East. 
and I think they can at least make a decent push in the playoffs this year and really be a team that in 2017, 2018 can only really make a push to win the entire East. Like I said, I still do genuinely believe they're one of the top four or five teams in the Eastern Conference this year, but I just don't think they're quite there at the top yet. But anyway, that's pretty much it. See ya.